Hello, this is Michael Tracy. In this video is going to look briefly at the life of Aaron Swartz and see how using the tools and ideas Aaron championed can help understand issues relating to the current debate about what Odell saw on June 8, 1924. Aaron Swartz was an internet pioneer who strongly believed the internet should be used to open up information for everyone. A number of excellent documentaries about Aaron's life have been made, and I'll link to some in the description. As a brief overview, Aaron Swartz was a computer programmer that worked on a number of internet initiatives and was one of the founders of Reddit. He went on to become a research fellow at Harvard, investigating institutional corruption, and performed an analysis of people who edit Wikipedia, both important issues covered in this channel. In 2011, Aaron was arrested for an incident involving getting JSTOR academic papers from a server at MIT. Later, he was charged by the federal government with allegations related to that incident. While I will not get into all the dirty tricks federal prosecutors play, the end result was that Aaron took his own life in 2013. However, Aaron did leave a legacy of making information available to the people, and in this video, I am going to highlight one of the tools Aaron worked on directly, and that is the Open Library from the Internet Archive. Thus, in this channel, I will refer to using open information as using the SWARTS, as Aaron championed numerous open knowledge initiatives, including the Creative Commons Licensing Project. The Open Library allows you to borrow books to read online, but most more importantly, it allows you to search the contents. Today I will be looking at the book Ghost of Everest, for which I have a physical copy, but when researching this particular issue, I use the online version to search for a specific phrase, and the online version is freely available for short-term usage to anyone on the internet. Thus, there is no need to take my word for what was written in the book, you can go verify it for yourself. The Open Library also has all the expedition reports from 1921, 22, and 24 available for free as the copyright has expired on those publications. Today I will look at a recent post by Jake Norton with a comment by Wacom Hemleb, which I link in the description. They are discussing the age-old question of what Odell saw. I won't get into every detail of the post, but I will outline exactly what Odell said, when he said it, and chronologically go through Odell's story as it morphed from the original simple and straightforward diary entry to the more elaborate and confusing versions that came out later. Then I will get into what we know about why it changed, and what we don't know about why it changed. For Odell's account, I find that people's memories of an event are best the closer in time they wrote down what they saw. Fortunately with Odell, we have not one, but two written accounts made the day he saw Mallory and Irvin and the day after. And this is where the open library comes in. I was wondering whether Hemlib simply didn't know about Odell's diary entry because he does not reference it in his comment and the diary entry is directly contrary to his statement that, quote, if one goes by Odell's testimony alone, there's little doubt he saw Mallory and Irvin at the second step. But let's look at what Odell said in a timeline. The first account is from Odell's diary, and this image is taken from the open library version of Ghost of Everest, so Hemlid knew about it and just chose to ignore it. The entry says, M and I on the ridge nearing base of final pyramid. The next day, Odell sends a dispatch down to Norton, and while we do not have this exact dispatch, we have Norton's diary entry that references the dispatch. Norton wrote that Odell said they were seen at 12.50, quote, going strong about the final step before the pyramid. Those two entries are entirely consistent, and the only features they reference are the ridge, a final step before the pyramid, and the pyramid itself, which Odell says they were near. It is after this that the story starts to change. First, Norton writes a letter to the Times on June 11th, stating they were seen at 28,000 feet at 11 a.m., which is a complete fabrication. The next account from Odell is written on June 14th, after he returned to base camp. It describes two figures quickly climbing a rock step to reach the crest of the ridge. Odell states, The place on the ridge referred to as the prominent rock step at a very short distance from the base of the final pyramid, and it is remarkable that they were so late in reaching this place. The next account is published in the Alpine Journal in November of 1924 and was written after Odell had returned to England. This account says, I noticed far away on a snow slope leading up to the last step but one from the base of the final pyramid, a tiny object moving and approaching the rock step. This account not only adds an additional rock step, but he also goes on to say that now he is not certain he saw the second figure join the first, while in the account from base camp he did see the second figure join the first on the ridge. The Alpine Journal account is repeated in the Geological Journal in December of 1924 with a photo with markings provided by Norton. Although the annotations in the photo mention the term second step, the annotation makes clear that identification was made by Norton. 
The next version from Odell appears in 1925 in the Expedition Report, and that is the first time Odell mentions the phrase the second step in his textual description. I did a search in the British newspaper archive, and Odell never used the phrase second step in any published newspaper accounts in 1924. Due to problems with character recognition, it is possible the search missed it, so if you find a published account from Odell in 1924 that uses the term second step in the textual description, please let me know. Otherwise, the first time the words second steps come from Odell are in the December 1924 Geological Journal, where it looks like they are part of the annotations put in by Norton. An identical marked up photo appears in Norton's section of the November Alpine Journal, so it does appear the phrase is Norton's. In June 1925, the expedition report is published, and this is the first time Odell mentions the phrase second step in his own written account. And if you pause the video and we're reading that account and are not sure what Odell meant referring to the latter possibly being blocked by terrain, he later explicitly states he thought he saw them on the second step, so he is referring to the possibility that the first step was blocked by terrain. From these statements, I'll outline what Odell stated starting on June 8, 1924 and ending in the June of 1925 expedition report. Beginning with his diary entry on June 8th, they are, quote, on ridge nearing base of final pyramid. On June 9th, they are, quote, going strong about the final step before the pyramid. A week later, they are on the prominent rock step at a very short distance from the base of the final pyramid. And five months later, the very short distance now includes an additional rock step as they are, quote, on a snow slope leading up to the last step but one from the base of the final pyramid. I do talk a little bit about what that could mean and why Odell might have phrased it in that particular way in the last step but one video. The next published account is from December of 1924, and the text is the same as the November article, but there is a photo with locations identified by Norton showing the second step. And finally, in June of 1925, it is either the first or second step, with the language of being a very short distance from the base of the final pyramid missing. Also missing is any reference by Odell or Norton that Odell wrote it down in his diary, and also sent a mountain dispatch down to Norton which is curiously the only mountain dispatch to have been destroyed in the entire expedition. There are a number of reasons to believe Odell did not see them at the second step, such as that it did not have a large snow slope on June 8, 1924, and that you cannot see people at the top of the step from where Odell was. It is also difficult to believe that both Mallory and Irvin scampered up the step in the short time Odell saw them. The largest problem is that there was no rope left to descend the second step and while ascending may be possible, no one has yet explained how they would get down without leaving a rope in place. I will point out that at one point in time, the Chinese claim to have found a stick, rope, and two oxygen bottles above the second step. I will discuss why I do not think that is accurate in a future video, but for those that like to believe every word from the Chinese, that account does exist. The Chinese currently maintain that no such items were found above the second step, and for those wondering, no, Mesner does not believe it either. Today, much of the debate assumes that Odell simply had a foggy memory, which he may have had, but that is not the only thing going on. During all this, Norton is constantly pushing the location further down the mountain for unknown reasons. First, there is Norton's dispatch on June 11th, where he says the sighting was at 28,000 feet at 11 a.m., with 28,000 feet being the first step. That was a complete fabrication. Next, Norton's information is used to make this photo, which has them spotted between the second and third steps. Later, Norton moves them down the ridge further in this photograph, placing them exactly at the second step. This photo appears in both the Alpine Journal and the Geological Journal, and I'm using the one from the Geological Journal as it indicates that the locations came from Norton. Finally, there is the expedition report published in June of 1925, which was worked on by both Norton and Odell, as well as other members of the expedition, and that has them either at the first or second step. While it is easy to account for the changes in Odell's versions by saying his memory was foggy, an equally valid explanation is that he was pressured to move the sighting further down the mountain by Norton. Had Odell seen them at the second step, there is no reason he simply would not have written that down in his diary. Instead, his diary does not even mention a rock step at all, simply noting they were close to the base of the final pyramid. This leaves us with a reason to believe Norton was pressuring him to change his story, but we do not know the reason why Norton was doing that. However, it was not long ago that we did not know about Mallory's postcard saying the ridge route was impossible, and Mallory's description of his two potential routes, although published in 1927, had not been discovered by the so-called researchers until recently. 
and in just the last few years, the detailed geographic data and photos showing the zigzag route showed that it should be climbable. Many of the issues relating to Mallory and Irvin's climb have barely been investigated, and much of the rhetoric seems to be people cutting and pasting from others while doing little research on their own, as even basic research would find mistakes such as which camp the cooker rolled down from. There is also the problem of the dark side of the Swartz. For every Aaron Swartz fighting to get information released, there are numerous people who want to keep the information for themselves. But there is hope. After maintaining for years that no information was being withheld for personal profit, a new tell-all book about the searches is on the horizon that will reveal even more previously untold details, no doubt all true, from a certain point of view. As 1924 approaches, information will continue to come out. Perhaps there will be some revelations about why Norton was trying so hard to force the sighting further down the mountain. With all the new information that has come out since Mallory was rediscovered in 1999, it is curious that some people refuse to update their theories to reflect the new facts. Instead, some of them change the facts to fit their theory. As I will get into in an upcoming video about Jake Norton's 2019 search, where the oxygen bottle is moved to the top of the first step to prove they took the ridge. If you have to fabricate data for your theory to work, it is a good indication that your theory is wrong. Ultimately, I believe the accounts written down closest to the event are the most accurate. The descriptions that they were at the base of the final pyramid places them at what is now known as the third step, but it was not called that at the time. It didn't have any particular name. They are consistent with a reasonable rate of climb, and they are consistent with them exiting the zigzag route, one of the two routes Mallory stated he could have climbed. While Odell's later statements differ, I discount these because Norton tipped his hand when he falsified the altitude and time in the June 11th dispatch, and it appears that Odell's changing story was more because of pressure from Norton rather than a faulty memory. To the extent it was a faulty memory, Norton was all too eager to fill in any missing details, and the various statements about the first and second step are nothing more than Norton writing his own narrative into history.